Yes. Do you have it so we can put the documents up on the on the meeting site as well? Yeah, I can allow you to share. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you, Carmen. I call the meeting for the neighbors of Dunn County to order here. And uh, September 28th, 9 a.m. There we go. Call the roll. I see Coralie Witzel and uh, Larry Bjork and myself are here and Don Keeter is on screen. Good to see you, Don. Right, so Thank we... you. So I, just Mr. Chairman, just in case I disappear, I, I'm a little bit under the weather this morning, so um, I can still hear you, but I might not be able to I'll go blank. But I'll try to hang in there as long as I can. Okay, well, we'll try to keep it short, too. Thank you, Don, for, for being there. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, approval of the minutes on the first on the agenda. Any questions on them, additions? or? I'll, I'll move. Don Keeter moved to approve the minutes. Uh, Supervisor Witzel seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, minutes are approved. No, it is uh, okay. And uh, any public comments, Carmen? No. Nope. Okay, that's good. Usually, yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing at the request of the chair. That's all down below. Report of the neighbor's fiscal year 22 audit, and we received that in our packet, and we all read every word of it. I, I do also have hard copies here if anyone else needs one. Thank you. It's very riveting information, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some of it is quite interesting. It's just, uh, it, it's, some of it is difficult to understand. Sure. Okay, good. Welcome, Sean. Okay. So we have Greg online to, okay. Uh, Greg, are you gonna take this over then or? I am, yeah. Um, thank you for having me here today. I'm Greg Patel, I'm the audit partner for the NDC audit. Um, Jane, if you can view um, side by side two pages. Uh, go up to view at the top left there. and then display and two page view. And then if you can go to page one. So page one really describes the opinion on the audit, which is an unmodified clean audit opinion, which is what you're striving for. Uh, we achieve that primarily through two phases. One is to look at your internal controls surrounding your most significant accounting processes. And that really relates to receipts and billing, payroll, disbursements, general journal entries. And then we're required to report um, if you have any deficiencies at either a significant deficiency or material weakness. Um, those are the two thresholds against which we measure those. Uh, we didn't issue a separate management communications letter for NDC. Um, there's a finding in there for financial reporting. And um, that really basically states that we prepare the financial statements themselves, but then we hand back to Jane and Beata and they review the financial statements and accept responsibility by signing the management rep letter. Um, the second phase of the audit is to take your trial balance and perform test of transactions to substantiate the amounts that we'll kind of look at here in a minute. 
And we do, and an example of that is taking your cash trial balance accounts and tying them out uh, per the bank statement, less any outstanding items. So, uh, you know, I think the nursing home um, accounting is in really good shape. And so I didn't really have anything additional in response to the audit process surrounding the NDC audit. And then I think we can move to the financial statements and I'll note a couple of observations there. And then, you know, all along the way, if you have any questions for me, you know, feel free to stop me or I can take any questions at the end as well here. So we'll kind of focus on page five first, which is the page on the right of the screen here. And I always, this is generically your income statement for the year. And I consider this to be the story of how are we doing from a long-term perspective, because it includes some non-cash transactions, which include your most significant non cash transaction is your depreciation expense. So, you know, whatever infrastructure, buildings, beds that you invest in and you capitalize, um, those are expensed essentially over the period of the expected life. And that's, so you pay the cash up front and then they're recognized over here on the left on the balance sheet or the statement of net position. But then over 10, 20 years, they're systematically expensed in depreciation expense there. And you can see that depreciation expense is $675,000. Um, so it's a fairly big component of your operating expenses. And so if we look about halfway down there, operating loss for the year, $3 million. And of course, that's always somewhat offset by the state of Wisconsin recognizing that their Medicaid rates don't recover the full cost of your operating expenses. And so then um, from the pool of the intergovernmental transfer program funds, you get an allocation based off of um, a calculation that the state does. And under the non-operating revenues there, we can see that's approximately a million dollars. So, you know, just stepping back to the operating loss for a second. Um, in the prior year in 2021, that was approximately $1.5 million. And then, you know, you had somewhat of a break-even year in 2021. Um, the first line under the operating expenses, your nursing services, is really what drove the increase in operating expenses for the year. And you're not alone in the pressures for finding um, staffing and in lieu of having your own ideal staffing mix, you have to purchase services for those and so really um, that increase drove the additional operating loss for the current year. And then an overall net loss then of 1.7 million. And if we move to page six, that is the cash flow statement. And I consider this to be more of a, the near term how are we doing and how are we funding all of our activities? So the most significant activities, of course, are your operating activities. And that's the first section of the cash flow statement here. And we can see um, not too much different from the net loss there. And so cash flows from operating activities, a net cash outflow of 3.1 million. If we go down to the next section of cash flows from non-capital financing activities, we'll see those ITP funds come in of a million dollars. And then that fourth line down is kind of the thing that I wanted to point out the most here, which is the advance from the general fund then uh, almost $2.1 million for the year. 
And the reason that the general fund has to advance that money is because from a gap or a generally accepted accounting principles standpoint, you cannot present negative cash on your statement of net position. So this advance essentially trues up your operating cash to zero. And when we go to the statement of net position, we'll talk about that a little bit. So important to understand, I think um, you now have an advance from the general fund here of that $2.1 million. And that essentially offsets along with the ITP funds, the loss for the year and the net cash outflow. And then we can kind of see overall net change in cash about halfway down the page, a uh, decrease of $3,000. And that is really the change in the patient trust um, cash account, which is a restricted cash um, on your statement of net position. So now, Jane, if we can move back to page four, we'll take a look at the statement of net position here. And the most current assets you have are presented at the very top of the statement of net position. And you can see there's no cash line there um, because we kind of talked about that $2 million advance from the general fund trued up cash to zero. You have accounts receivable of 1.5 million. And when we look at the aging, the aging isn't overly concerning. Um, you know, sometimes in a nursing home, you look at uh, receivables greater than 90 days and start to worry about, you know, how can our billing procedures capture um, the services earned by the nursing home faster? And I don't see that as a significant problem here. I think your billing practices are pretty good. Um, so you can just see, you know, essentially the accounts receivable almost net out that advance from the general fund and then you know but of course your operating expenses don't stop and so while we could kind of look at the receivables at the end of the year the snapshot as of december 31 um, as somewhat negating that advance from the general fund um you know the flip side of that is your operating expenses keep creating a cash outflow from that day forward as well. And so I think, you know, what I talked about with Jane and Beata um, when we were wrapping up the audit is I think, you know, the board needs to consider whether that advance is recoverable going into the future or not, or whether that advance is something in the 23 fiscal year that the county and the board wants to essentially forgive um, so that the neighbors can go forward without necessarily owing that advance. Now that's a management decision, um, but certainly, you know, from, doing the audit for the 22 year, that was a fairly significant um, activity to point out in my opinion. So those are really my financial observations. Do you have any questions for me? Sean or Don? No, I don't, no, thank you, no. Uh, Supervisor Bjork has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page six, you talked about the ITT fund. What was yes. the, that? Yeah, those the ITP, um, and I apologize if I went with the acronym there, that's the intergovernmental grants or the revenues from the state to oh, re okay. there you go. reimburse your loss a little bit. Yeah. yeah. When we talk about that, the lay term for it is supplemental payment. So that's what we have talked about a lot. Okay. Um, so there's different terms for it. Good. <laughs> I don't see any other questions. 
Mr. Chair, if I if I could say one thing. Yeah, go ahead, Jane. Um, in November of last year, we got our discontinue notice from Clifton Larson Allen and Kerber Rose uh, was kind enough to take us on as a client at the last minute. So they've worked very, very hard uh, getting these financials ready for us, going through all of the old documents that they weren't familiar with. Um, so it was a, a, a challenging year, I think, for Kerber Rose. And I'd like to say thank you to them for working with us. Thank yeah. you. Great. Yeah. Really appreciate that, Jane. I mean, the team at, you know, working with Jane on the neighbors and then um, the overall team at the county, you know, those are the kind of clients that we really appreciate bringing on and working with at Kerber Rose because everyone's been, been very receptive to any suggestions that we've had. And we've worked through some challenges um, that the county's accounting system really creates. But, and there's always uh, a lot of investment of time um, on the initial year of taking over a new client, especially a county that has a lot of different operations to capture. Um, but, you know, we're really appreciative of the effort to, or the, the opportunity to work with you. Yeah, thank you very much, Greg. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, short and uh, a good explanation. Summarized really well. No, I should have said that while well, Greg was still on. But uh, uh, next up then would be Community Mentor Administrator Report All right. from Carmen Men. Car <laughs> Carmen. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. As always, we start with the Quality Assurance Steering Committee updates. Um, we met two weeks ago. Uh, there wasn't anything that out of the norm that was discussed. We went over our monthly reports as well as quarterly reports. Uh, we did talk about COVID at quite length um, because we have seen an uptick in COVID-19 cases. Um, I will talk about that a little bit later as well as a new um, booster dose. Um, so we were discussing our plan for that for both residents and staff. Uh, so uh, that was our main topic of discussion during that committee, uh, but nothing outside of the norm for the other reports. Any questions on QA? Doesn't look like it. Thank okay. you, Carmen. Uh, next is the employment report. So I believe Chris is online. Morning. Oh, Chris. Morning. So I apologize. I sent out that uh, employment and uh, resident referral report a little bit late. Um, I didn't realize it was in the main packet. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, so types of recruitment are both the same, um, as you can read down through that. Um, we did have a few interviews, um, seven, we offered seven positions, um, seven were accepted and offered at a higher than a step three zero. Um, and then we did have a little bit of an uptick in um, resignations um, for part-time CNAs. Um, I, I know that sounds like a, a, a good chunk. Um, those are people that have been out um, on various leaves, typically educational leaves. Um, that either graduated, just haven't made contact with us. So it's just a little bit of a cleanup. Um, some of them hadn't worked in over a year. So they've been pretty much been replaced. But as far as, uh, you know, accounting for those positions, I did throw them on the, the report. Um, and we did have one uh, homemaker that left. Uh, she moved to Chicago. So go down to open positions. Those were adjusted with uh, people coming and going. And then work comp lost hours, nothing. And as Carmen had said, we did have a little uptick in some COVID positives. So that is remain strong, I guess, if you want to use that word for it. Um, so 46 shifts missed or roughly 460 hours. So. Anybody have a question on that? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, so when you talk about the open positions like so Ari. Carly, could you speak uh, this so people oh, sorry. can hear us better? Okay, so when you speak about open positions for the RN, LPN, and they say 10 total positions, but three positions filled with agency, is that including the three? 
No. But no. No. So it would be like seven then. So it's okay. like 10 open positions for internal oh, and no. yes. you're currently yes. filled with agency. So you've only you've got you've got seven then RNs. Seven that would be completely open because they wouldn't be filled with agency. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. To to go with that, uh so we could use seven more RNs. Correct. <laughs> Uh, even with just uh, eight households open? Um, no, not necessarily. So we we do have some of those aren't filled. We wouldn't fill all of them. If we had that many staff, um, if all if all of those were totaled out to zero, we would be able to open that last household. Oh, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. Uh, a while back, didn't we hire or approve more positions for Homemaker? Yes, we did. And is that difficult to fill? Um, it's been okay to fill the PM shift homemakers. Actually, the AM shift homemakers is what's harder to fill the positions we already had. Um, the PM shift homemakers we have frequently are high school students. Uh, so they're able to come after school and work, um, which is a really good shift for them. They can come and just serve the dinner meal. Uh, so that works well for our younger employees. The AM homemaker, which we had existing, that was that's actually our harder homemaker shift to fill because it is a day shift position. So someone in school um, or with a different job, it would be difficult to do. And those are the the homemaker positions that are open, our day shift. All the PM ones are filled. Okay. Okay. And uh, thinking here. But right now we have more homemaker homemakers working than we did before we added the correct. Okay. Yep, because yeah. all the PM shift positions are filled. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Plus a few of the others. All right. Yep. Uh, okay. That's it then for employment activity report. And Chris, while we're talking to you, uh, thank you for sending the things together. I, I know you forgot this part, but thanks for sending all the stuff together. It was easier for me. I know to get one packet and uh thanks for starting to send the the packet to all the supervisors i appreciate that you're welcome all right uh next is a cna training program um i don't have much to update on that i will be honest this last month was pretty hectic so we didn't get anywhere on this but it is going to be a focus of the next coming month um hoping that some other things settle down um, which i will get to in the next couple of agenda items but we did have a pretty hectic last month um, but we also, there is a grant uh, that the company that we are working with for this received. So we're hoping that might help as well, but um, not much has changed in that, but it is going to be something that we focus a lot of time and energy on in the next couple of months. Any questions? Thank you, none. A resident referral report. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the hectic things that occurred this month. Uh, so we did open Fireside Manor this month. Uh, so we have more residents, which is wonderful. Uh, so we had 102 residents at the beginning of August. Uh, as this is dated back, so uh, talking about September was hectic. Uh, we uh, did start admitting to Fireside in the first week of September. So our numbers now are actually a little bit higher than what's on this report. Uh, so in the beginning of August, we had 102 residents. Uh, we had 72 referrals. We admitted six. Uh, we had uh, 66 people not admitted. We had 102 people at the end of the month. Uh, so it stayed pretty steady. We had no transfers to other facilities. We had three deaths and we had four people discharge home. Our referral sources have remained uh, primarily the same. Uh, since this report, since this is just through August, uh, in September, as I said, we opened Fireside. Currently we're having it about half open. So meaning we're maxing out at eight residents in that household. That is so that we can still limit staff down there. Uh, we don't need to be fully staffed then. We're also trying to admit people that require less uh, staff time and care. So one person transfers, things like that, uh, just to kind of ease our way back in and not put as much of a burden on staff down there. Uh, so that has been going really well. It's nice to have more short-term rehab as that is people on Medicare. So one of our higher payer sources and also help with cash flow as well. 
Uh, currently, I believe our census today was 110. Uh, so we are easing back up there. So that is wonderful news. And then East and West are still staying pretty much completely full. Uh, when we have someone pass away or discharge, that bed fills pretty quickly. So it is going well in terms of referral and getting our census back up uh, to a better number. Any questions? What's a, a break even? I'm sorry, is there? A... No, it's just good news. Oh, okay. Uh, what's the break even number? What? We don't have a specific number because it really depends on payer source. Since each payer source is different, um, we're just hoping to get more residents um, in. I would believe if we were to able to fill Fireside, we'd be in a much better position when it comes to breaking even. Um, I can't give an actual number because it would really depend on what payer sources are and each person we get a different rate for. So um, there's not a specific number, but the more we can get, the better. Okay, looks like no other questions. Scott, you've been waiting so patiently. Good morning, everyone. Yes, waiting patiently. Um, I guess the big thing to report was our East survey. Uh, life safety, we had no sites for that. Came out nice and clean. Everything went well. Brady did a great job on having everything organized. Um Mark, the engineer that was here, gave Brady compliments on how well he takes care of things. Everything organized. He looks through all the paperwork, and it's right there for him. Makes it real easy. Uh, did a walk through the building, and uh, everything looked good. So very good survey there. Oh, wow. Uh, and the other thing to uh, report, we did have another fire outside in the shrubbery outside of Tender Hearth from cigarette it was um easily put out by a pail of water but it was smoking so we the following week we did take and pull that shrubbery out of there it uh it was the evergreen the dry evergreen that hugs the ground and uh brady and i had talked about taking it out with the prior fire and that at that time it was so dry during the summer that uh we kind of held off a little bit. Well, this time it happened. We're just like, no, we're pulling it out. So we got it yanked out of there. Um, in the springtime, I'll be working with uh, Master Gardeners. And Alyssa has been working with getting volunteers that will be working on more of the flower gardens. So that will be addressed then to make things look better. So we're working toward that. <clears throat> Other than that, the guys have been... Uh, Starting to work on doing some preventive maintenance, getting ready for winter. Brady and I were looking at one of the generators to do some preventive maintenance. So he's going through those, get those ready for winter. So we don't have any problems. Uh, shifting from that, uh, that summer lawn mowing season to go toward get ready for that white stuff to come and colder temperatures. So aside from that, everything is going well. Any questions? Uh, I'm I'm wondering about our agenda as far as Scott sitting through the whole thing. Would it be better if we put him first so you could leave in the future? Or it it really doesn't matter to me. I'm fine with it where it is. I listen to the reports. I like Carmen's report and uh, hearing how things are going there. And I just work on some other stuff while I'm here. So. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, environmental facilities report is finished and we are now up to COVID-19 update. Yep. We're going to see this on here for a few years. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going away anytime soon. Before I get to that, I'm also just going to add to the environmental report um, regarding the fire as there might be questions about that. Um, so it was a resident cigarette. So there's some things regarding smoking with residents. Um, even though the county is a smoke-free campus, uh, there is a federal regulation regarding the right to smoke for residents. So we kind of have two competing rules or regulations in terms of the county. Uh, we are smoke-free, uh, tobacco-free, so that is for staff, visitors, things like that. 
Um, but CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, does require us to allow residents to smoke. Uh, so we don't re we aren't required to have them smoke inside. Um, it's an outdoor thing, but we are required to let them smoke. Uh, we try our best to get them to not be close to the buildings. We try to make sure that uh, they are doing everything safely. So we have to do a smoking assessment for them. Um, all of the residents that we have on campus that do smoke um, have had a smoking assessment completed to make sure they are safe. So they're not burning themselves, having cigarettes on themselves, things like that. Um, but we are required to allow them to smoke. Uh, when there is situations like this, we do try to put a plan in place to prevent them from happening in the future. Unfortunately, we have a couple of stubborn individuals that uh, when we ask them to be further away and make sure they're putting out cigarettes in um, a safe manner, it hasn't worked. So we are working for a solution for that. But um, per CMS rules, we are required to allow residents to smoke. So just to ease up any confusion since we are a smoke-free campus. Um, and I have gone this over with this with Chris Corpola about how the reg, the federal reg competes with our local um, rules as well. So it's interesting. So you're teaching them how to smoke safely. That's just a <laughs> oxymoron, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Supervisor Bjork. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was going to um, ask the question to do with disposal of the cigarette safety. Mm -hmm safely and i've never been a smoker but you know the thing is uh if you are it's easy to light up but how how is that cigarette extinguished and i you know i know the aesthetic value of having one of those little tower things mm -hmm. where they drop the butt in it i mean are we there or not there or uh we're not there yet uh one of the things since we have very few residents who smoke um for many years we had none uh, currently, we have two on cam on the whole campus. So the one individual that uh, the fire was a result of, um, we have tried to give him like a pail of water to have it um, put out in, as well as putting that further from the building. The one thing that we don't want is having the place to put cigarettes out in right next to the building, because that'll encourage people to smoke right there. Uh, so we're trying not to have the extinguishing point be really close so that they're sitting right there while smoking. Uh, so we've tried a couple of different things. We might be to the point soon of having something like that. Um, as I hope as time goes on, we'll have less residents that smoke as that becomes a less popular thing through generations. Uh, but currently we're working just with uh, one or two specific individuals who still choose to smoke. Um, our other person who does, he typically leaves campus to smoke. Um, he's going around, um, he takes his wheelchair out and he's able to do that. So that's better for us. But there is one individual who does want to smoke close to campus. Chair, um, you know, I'm not going to argue for smoking, mm -hmm. um, but um, I could see if you've been a lifelong smoker mm -hmm. and you are restricted to a nursing home, having your beloved cigarette outside with fresh air, you yep. know, I'm sorry, that's, you know, and looking around and listening to the birds uh, might be a real important activity mm -hmm. to that person. Yep. So I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying, you know, maybe you get tired of being told that you're creepy because you smoke cigarettes. Yeah. You know, you know there's got to be a limit to that a little bit. Yeah. We just try to make sure they're doing it in a safe way for both themselves and others. Any other questions on that? <clears throat> yeah, Mr. Sherry. Yep. Um, uh, I'm a little confused, but you still can't smoke inside, right? No. Yeah, there's no smoking inside, no tobacco use at all inside. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so I will now move on to COVID-19. Um, as Supervisor Kinnear said, uh, we are going to have this on here for a while. Uh, it is something that is not going away, um, and we have felt uh, the effects of more and more in the last month. 
Um, over the last month, we have had over 20 residents test positive and uh, 10 to 15 staff. I don't have the number off the top of my head, um, but we've had a lot of positive COVID um, that has come from um, seemingly outside the community, from staff, residents, things like that. Um, what I can say is that fortunately, recently, we have not seen um, negative outcomes of COVID. We haven't had hospitalizations or deaths um, in the last month or so. Uh, we did have a death that I think I reported a couple of months ago, um, but our most recent outbreaks, we have not had um, anyone have severe illness, which is good. Um, the largest part of one of our outbreaks was one of our memory care households had a positive resident in it. Um, and then when we tested all of the other residents, that whole household had COVID. Um, in our memory care households, that is extremely difficult. Uh, we cannot keep residents in their rooms. Um, they, you tell them it's time to stay in your room, you're under isolation. They forget that shortly after and come out of their rooms um, and they're very social with each other. So um, that was pretty much inevitable. Um, and quite frankly, if they were all going to get it, them all getting it at once makes the isolation time for that household shorter. So it's actually probably easier that way for both the residents and staff. Um, so as long as they all have good outcomes, um, that is not the end of the world, but uh, that did occur. And then we've had one-off cases in other households. Uh, with positive residents and positive staff, currently every household on campus is in what's called an outbreak. Uh, so all eight households have either had a positive resident or a positive staff person in the last 14 days. Uh, so what that means is every household on campus is currently wearing masks again. Uh, that is per CMS, uh, federal regulation, as well as state regulations, and then also um, facility policies. Anytime there is an outbreak, we are required to require masks for visitors and staff um, in the affected household for the length of the outbreak. Um, so that means for 14 days after the last positive case. Uh, so if we just have one, it's 14 days. If we have one and then a few days later, we have another, that 14 days starts over. Um, but we have had some that have just been 14 days, some that have been extended longer, things like that. Um, so that's why in that memory care household, so that'll just be 14 days because they all had it at once um, versus having that extend longer and longer um, if they test positive a couple days later and then another one a couple days later. Uh, so currently all households are in outbreak, um, so they are wearing masks. Um, if you come over to the neighbors, it is required to wear masks right now. Uh, hopefully that ends soon. Um, each household will come off at a different time. So we have that posted on the doors um, as well as we send out updates to all the families um, every time there is a change. Um, it is something that has been hard for everyone to get used to of wearing masks again. Uh, typically, we have had just kind of one-off situations since we took masks away. Anytime there's been a positive, we've just had that household wear masks for 14 days, so it really hasn't been that big of a deal. Um, at this point, we have everybody in them. Um, I did work with public health with KT uh, this week to discuss plans going forward. Um, if we were at the point that they recommended everybody being in masks at all times, and they said no, so that's a good thing. Um, we looked at community levels and things like that, um, and there are us and other um, healthcare entities are experiencing more COVID right now, uh, but as a community as a whole, there's been an uptick, but not as big of a spike as in past times when it's gotten really rough. Um, so she said at this point, just keep doing outbreak masking, but once places are out of, households are out of outbreak, uh, we can take masks away again. So we are happy with that um, because it is difficult to have staff put them back on and visitors and things like that. So I'm hoping this passes quickly, but it is something that we are currently dealing with. Um, also in the COVID world, um, we are working for the next booster. Uh, so as you might have heard, the um, next booster did get FDA approved. Um, so we have a date that we will have vaccines at the facility for residents. Uh, we actually are having a pharmacist come out and help us with that. So that's great. Um, that'll be a lot easier than having our staff do it. So um, our pharmacy uh, 
consultant or contract, they are going to come out and help us with a vaccine clinic for any residents that would like one. So we're currently working through getting consents for that um, and doing it in advance. So at the day of the clinic, it's just easy. We got it all done, have the consents from POAs or uh, the residents themselves, if they're able to consent for themselves um, and go from there. So um, at the time, we will also be doing flu shots, uh, which is kind of related to this, um, as well as hopefully uh, we will have the RSV vaccine as well for our residents. Any questions on COVID? I don't see any, but it, it's important to note, uh, Carmen mentioned working with KT, there's so much goes on in the background, cooperation between uh, different departments that we don't even think about. And that's great. Uh, that's yeah. county government working together. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, we are in constant contact with public health. So every time we have a positive case, either resident or staff, we are required to notify them. So I talk to public health every day. And then frequently uh, we talk more than just about the positive cases to really talk about what we should be doing, if there's things we should change um, and stuff like that. So they're a great partner. Okay, you're going to talk some more about the East survey activity from your point of view. Yes. Um, so I'm not, I don't quite remember if we talked about this last month. It might have been the same week as this, I believe. Uh, so we did have East survey um, at the end of August. Uh, so that was our annual survey for the East neighborhood. Uh, they were there three days. There was four, three surveyors, three surveyors. Um, that came and surveyed uh, the East building. We ended up with two minor citations, um, which as you recall, if you might recall um, when I've talked about the average citations, Wisconsin is eight as the average number of citations per survey and the national average is nine. So two minor citations is a really good survey. Um, so it'd be much above average. Um, so that was a good outcome. They were both really minor things, um, mainly related to staff education, uh, just small errors, um, things like wearing a hairnet when in the kitchen uh, was one of them, and then some hand washing infection control kind of situations was the other. So all corrected by doing um, staff education of the specific staff members and then um, education of all staff to prevent any f future um, issues with any of those things. So that was our East annual survey. Um, and then also on the East side, uh, we had a complaint survey last week. Uh, we have seen an uptick in complaint surveys related to um, our self-reports, uh, which is something that we do anytime we have an incident that requires us to report something to the state of Wisconsin. Um, that would be anything like abuse, neglect, misappropriation of funds, um, any sort of issue that we have to report. Um, this is something that we were told by the surveyors is happening across the state as a whole. So this comes down from the Madison office. Our regional surveyors um, just get assigned to do it. Uh, we have seen three of these complaint surveys recently. Uh, they don't know why they're occurring. Uh, they're saying that they're seeing it everywhere, uh, that the surveyors are basically given go to this facility and do this survey, but not any rationale. Uh, the survey was citation-free, unsubstantiated. He had no concerns, thought everything was handled appropriately, um, and that it, there was no issues. So that's a good outcome. Um, but unfortunately, it does take time away from staff on those days, as well as the surveyors. Uh, so we're a little bit confused of why that is occurring. Uh, is something coming down from Madison? Uh, so working on a resolution so that does not continue to occur because uh, it is a lot of time and effort, both on our part as well as the state surveyor's part, um, which is another state service. So uh, we talk a lot about good use of taxpayer dollars, uh, the surveyors coming in on surveys that they they themselves don't understand why they're there, um, seemingly is not that. So uh, working on trying to figure out how we can prevent that in the future um because they said they don't they don't know why it's happening either so but all in all a good outcome supervisor so, witzel i've got a question so how long a time frame would you say it took for this uh uh complaint survey the complaint surveys are one day typically mm -hmm. so they come in normally in the morning and say we're here to investigate a complaint 
um, and then they go over just that complaint. So those annual surveys are typically three days. They look at everything, and those are required for certification of a nursing home. Um, it's just a research survey every year, but the complaint surveys are typically only a day. Um, sometimes they might go into a second day if they have more things to look at, um, but all of these complaint surveys that have been about self-reports have just been one day and one surveyor. Okay, so any particular, like, um, the abuse or any particular problem that kind of stands out in some of these areas that they um, do on these complaint surveys? Or is it you don't, I mean, nobody knows? Or... So these are related to self-reports. Yeah. So um, anytime there's a situation that happens, say we have a resident to resident situation, which has been a lot of them. Um, so a resident and a resident have an altercation. Uh, we have to report that to the state of Wisconsin as well as the police. Um, so we do all those steps. We do our whole report, investigation, send it in. In past, it has just been, okay, we'll review it at annual survey, no harm, no foul, uh, no issue. Recently, they have then been coming in on separate surveys for those, and they don't really understand why. Uh, they come in, they're confused, we're confused. They look at the report, talk to the residents if they're able to, talk to staff, um, things like that and then say, we don't have any issues and leave. So um, that's what the majority of them have been, but it's been on things we've independently reported to them. Um, and they get the whole report and they come in and basically reread the report and do a little bit of an investigation and so far have had no issues with any of them. So we're a little bit confused of why. Um, and it's just, it does take a lot of time and it's just also a stressful situation for everybody when they walk in the building. Um, so we're just hoping that that doesn't continue because it has been, we've had three since July. So, and I've been an administrator for seven years and I had never had a single one before that for a self-report investigation. So it just seems odd. So if, if there was a resident complaint or a family mm -hmm. complaint, yep. you would know they would come in and say, we got a resident complaint. Yes. So they do tell you what it's, um, they don't tell you who complained because um, they're normally anonymous, um, but they come in and they say, we're here for a complaint survey. And then when we go and talk to them, they will tell us if it's either an anonymous complaint or a self-report survey. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, anything more on the East survey? Nope. Not Any questions, question. Sean or Don? No, doesn't look like it. I heard some rattling when they shook their heads. Okay, then. I hope that was that recorded. Okay. Uh, are then uh, we're on to number eight with Jane, I think. Here we go. I just didn't want you to hear my my uh, head rattling here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're listening, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, so what I have up on the screen, I'm assuming you can see the screen. I can't see it from my perspective. Good. Um, campus census. Um, as Carmen said, we're having more. The census is higher um, in general. So we've got a little bit more Medicaid. Uh, private pay in green, of course, is lagging behind the goal, um, but still is higher than last month and higher than all of this year. The green bar is 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 higher, so that's great. Veterans, we're getting a lot of veteran um, census as well. So things are looking good, I guess, as total census increases. Any question on that? Uh, a, a couple quick ones. I see that the yeah, other private pay going up, but the Medicare going down with the with the opening. Will that go back up? Yes, that will. So this is through August 31st, and we opened uh, Fireside at the first week of September. So, I um, mean, that is primarily all Medicare. So that number will be higher next month. And how are the bars set? The, the goals are they set as if we're open nine? Yep. So this Those one were yeah. budgeted for the yeah last year's budget for the 2023 year was uh, for nine open households as okay, we were directed you. to do. But now this next year in 2024, it'll be 
uh, a little bit different. So the goals aren't as, as lofty, they're more realistic. Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay. Campus census, good. Got that one done, close that one out. Um, the invoices, the vouchers, any questions on those? Okay. No, looks good. Um, the aging summary. I know Greg spoke to the aging amount of 1.5. That does include the, the audit amount does include our one account that is our um, allowance for bad debt. It's like what you would put in your savings account for what I would call my hot water fund, hot water heater fund, the, your savings account. That's included in the audit number, the 1.5. So we do have an account, an expense account that does have excess in it. Uh, that's how enterprise funds are, are mandated to be. So his number on the audit is a little bit different than say the 1.5 that we had. Actually at year end, it would have been higher here on my numbers, but um, yeah, so it's a little bit different. Uh, our aging looked good in August. As census rises, you might get a little bit higher aging number because we've got more funny, more billing going on. So questions on aging? Uh, Supervisor Witzel. I just got a question. Can you go to back to the one you were at? Because I don't think I have that one. The the one before this aging sum summary, do I have that one? The um, This one? The census. I have the aging and the census. I thought there was another one. Maybe I was just looking wrong. Okay. Yep, I only had two graphs. Okay. Um, cool. Okay. Then yep. you're good. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, the invoices or? Oh. Oh, the invoices. It was the vouchers, vouchers. sheet, Jane. Oh, the voucher sheet. Yeah. That, that's what I was talking about. Sorry. Okay. Vultures. I couldn't think of it, but I don't have that. So it should have come they out. They were in the packet. Huh? They were in the packet. It came out. I think the first yeah. thing in the packet was the audit, and it came out as one huge PDF. So at the very bottom of that document. I it, it looks pretty much the same as always with the, okay, just... the high amount for CNAs. And we just have two uh, two agencies we're using now? Correct. Um, okay. Primarily one, but we do have a couple people from a different one. Okay. And are we able to get what we need through those agencies? Yeah, right now we're doing okay with uh, those agencies. We have um, the one agency that we primarily use. Um, sometimes we... They don't have like an RN or something. So that's why we use that secondary one. But we have very few from the secondary. Any questions then on the vultures? I don't see any questions then. Okay. That looks good. Uh, uh, the, yep. Go ahead. On to the financials, which look uh, pretty much uh, standard like we've had every month. Uh, nothing unusual is happening. We are uh, projecting the intergovernmental supplemental payment to be as it was the last six months. It's really, um, I guess, because the state hasn't made any mention of if it's, if it's going to be higher, lower, how they can make us full. Um, the rates exact of Medicaid are also um, very fluid. Um, so right now we have uh, public uh, charges. That's our revenue that's coming in. Eight million. We're almost on target. Um, so it's total projected is twelve eight, and our uh, well, excuse me, our budget was thirteen five. I was looking at the prior year. We are going to be lower on on our compared to the budget, but again, we were budgeting for nine open households for all twelve months. So. And that's, Jane, correct me if I'm wrong, but that projected should go up to now that we, so for that's projecting out with us having a closed household. So we should have a little bit more than that projected now that fireside's open as well with a higher payer source in there. Right, right. And once we get those, uh, 
the numbers into the SAP um, at the end of September, we'll have a higher higher volume of charges so that we can project a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And projections are are just that they they aren't uh, carved in stone. So many fluid items with Medicaid can throw this off off the grid completely. So yeah, it's uh, as good as we can do at this point in time. Um, miscellaneous revenues. You'll notice according to budget, we're down quite a bit as far as our projection. That's because we budgeted the bistro to be open. We have $61,000 embedded in this miscellaneous revenue in the bistro that isn't coming in. So we're pretty much on target then with the miscellaneous, which includes um, the senior meals. Uh, interest is minor. Donations, that's the bus uh, revenue. And when I look at our other spreadsheets, as far as year to date in an account that doesn't really pull to this form, our bus fund is at just over $73,000. So that's healthy. Salary and fringe um, at 4.4 right now estimating at almost 7 million and then agency staff at another 5 million. So that's, as Greg said in the audit, that is the big item to watch. And we can't do much with that if we wanna you know, keep the households open, we have to pay, pay staff. And as a reminder that that's the total cost of agency. So the budgeted amount is only the additional cost of agency. So we have the regular staff budgeted and then the additional cost that agency is. So comparing budget to actuals, there's a little bit difficult because that's, we would take some of that money out because we would have paid the regular staff that too. So um, we there's not a way of doing that in here because we use invoices to show cost of the agency, but it's, it's a little bit like comparing apples to oranges. So that's why we have that separate chart later on. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And, thank you. I was kind of wondering about that and that makes sense. Yeah. It's a little topsy turvy because it's, it's really the net of that. And then this line has operating or excuse me, salary and fringe is more than just nursing as well. So that's, this is a higher level. And then the next chart would be a more detail. And so the bottom line is 1.8, which keeps coming down slightly. And we'll see this uh, net deficit come down again as Medicaid rates are updated. They're um, in general overpaying the Medicaid rates and then there'll be a take back once they get final rates. So the interim rates are going to be a little high. Um, so it'll look like we're doing really great. And then at the end, boom, they might take money back. So like I say, they are projections to the best of our abilities with what we have right now. Okay, uh, Supervisor Bjork, you have a question? Someplace in here I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have a question that we haven't uh, gone through uh, either with James or with uh, the auditor. And um, uh, the auditor recorded re uh, rental income of, you know, almost $10,000. And uh, I could ask him then, but I assume that most of that was land rent. Mm -hmm. Okay. About so that, ninety, that, about nine thousand or ninety five hundred is land rent, and then we get, uh, we receive a little bit of rental for the beautician each month. So she rents the beauty shops, and she makes the income from that. Okay. Well, here's why I asked that. Um, when you're looking at an operating loss of three million dollars. You know, there are people that will say, well, um, how much debt is against that so that if you s sold the facility, would, would you be in a negative position or a positive position? So then I switch back to what actually is the footprint of the neighbors of Dunn County. 
Apparently, the footprint of the neighbors of Dunn County generates over $9,000 in rent. So I've never heard anybody say um, the land around uh, the neighbors that was one time the health care center uh, has appreciated in value. And even though we're having a hard time in um, operating the neighbors, uh, projecting a loss that uh, the neighbors actually it is has appreciated in value because of the land that it sits on. Now I sat right next to uh, um, former chairman um, Christofferson when uh, the piece of land was carved off of the neighbors for the medical facility there that was built and that the road went in and that uh, uh, was neighbor's property. So what is the neighbor's net worth? Is, is the net worth of the neighbors just the building facility or is the net worth of the neighbors uh, the land that it sits on and the adjoining land? Or has the county... Right. Pick that up. Can can I? Yeah, can I, I don't. I just don't on, know where to go. I just want to piggyback on what he said. Uh, I know at least twice in the past we've actually had uh, that question evaluated, mm -hmm. and uh, the first time I remember five six years ago it was we would lose money to sell it, mm -hmm. and then later it was we would make some money to sell it. Mm -hmm. Has that been done lately? Uh, it was done. Um, what was this three ish years ago? Um, I believe uh, we had it looked at by basically a broker firm um, looked at it. I I am not 100% sure I'd have to go back and look and see if that included the land that is leased. Um, so, and it would also depend on the sale. So if it were to sell, uh, I doubt that another nursing home would want the farmland. So the county owns all the property. Yes, it's neighbors, but as the county owns the neighbors, the county truly owns the property and the neighbors. Um, so even though it's separately accounted for, say it didn't sell and the neighbors closed, hypothetically, the county would still own the property and the building. So if it were to sell to a different nursing home company, most nursing homes don't lease farmland. So I doubt that that would be part of the sale. So that would probably stick with the county. Um, so I don't know if that helps answer that question. We lease the farmland currently to CVTC, um, which is something we negotiate on a five-year contract with them. Um, so we did that, I believe it was three-ish years ago, uh, three or four. Uh, so we actually will be coming up on that um, lease agreement soon because they are five-year agreements um, currently with CVTC. Go ahead, Larry. Well, um The healthcare center at one time was a farm. Mm -hmm. And as enterprises changed, the dairy herd left, the hogs or whatever it was left, and the land stayed. So the county would not have the asset of the land without having the healthcare center. And <laughs> I've seen it twice where, where farms have been sold and they get a good price for the farm. And the new owner comes along and harvests off the hardwoods of the farm that nobody ever, well, it's just the woods. Well, that woods probably paid for a third of the farm. So if, if the farmland is not an asset of uh, the healthcare center, it should be. Because if someone purchases uh, I guess we don't even have a description of 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 of, of what the healthcare center is anymore. But I mean, you know, <laughs> any blind realtor could see that that land that's being rented is worth a heck of a lot more than what it's producing. I mean, it just is. So I mean, you know, I want to see the healthcare center stay. And I want to see it thrive. 
But uh, one of the assets is the land up and up, you know, I mean, it, it just is, you know, and for, for, uh, um, for the healthcare center to just say, well, you know, go ahead, county, have it, do what you want, is wrong, in my opinion. So, I mean, I don't even know where I'm going on that. It's just that I wish I had a better idea of what the footprint of the of the Dunn County of, of neighbors was. And just, I mean, we 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 received the we received the rental income from the land. Mm -hmm. Why would why why wouldn't that say that that land is part of the healthcare center? It's interesting. I, that's a totally different point of view. I would have never thought of it that way, but we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And we also never got. Well, it's not fair, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. in, in a way, we we never got paid for the building we're in right now, which was the. It's kind of like you should sell your old house and then move into the new one, but we just moved into the new one with. Right. So yeah, so yeah, I, I get you. I, I get you. And uh, Supervisor Bjork, we do the healthcare center actually does the negotiation for the land lease too, uh, so it is directly related to us. So um, when that went through the last time, it came to this committee um, for decision of who got the land lease, um, as well as I was directly involved with leasing the land, which uh, I am not trained on how to do, but I utilized some other county resources to um, help with that negotiation. And at the time um, when we continued to lease to CVTC of why we have that lower rent um, was the committee and then the board as a whole approved that as it was a greater um, benefit to the community to have them um, doing no-till testing and things on that than it would be to have the higher rent from, say, a private farmer. Well, I'm a farmer. And what they do is important, but it's not earth shaking. I mean, it just isn't. And uh, um, <laughs> you know, when the healthcare center gets squeezed and says, you know, you ought to be making some money out there, guys. You know, our response should be, well, then you know. Uh, we may have to sell off some of our asset and our asset is land. And when that comes up, this committee will have a say on that. Yeah. Okay. And, well, and you, you can, know, I just, I, I hate to go off into the woods, but, you, but you I it, it, remember it, it though. It, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It bothers, it bothers me that, that you'll have people that will say, uh, are the neighbors now, if we sell them, do we make $10? And I'm saying, well, how much of it are you going to sell? Are you going to are you going to sell the buildings where the medical facilities are located, or are you talking about uh, the acreage of the land that is the healthcare center? It has always been, but you know, there a lot of places in the county would like would like to ha use that asset for the, themselves. And of course, you realize it's it's near the airport, so you can't put any kind of residence on it. Fine, but I also realize that that uh, a lot of it is, is well. I I don't yeah. realize much of anything. <laughs> but no, it's important. And when we go through that, we'll we'll have a say in it. And please remember what you said today. Mm -hmm. I know that's a tough assignment for most of us, but uh, I think you can. Okay. Um, where were we? Jane? Are you there? Oh, I am here. I am here. Interesting conversation. I'm, I'm, uh, riveted. <laughs> Been through those types of conversations, uh, at, at, at St. Croix County. And it's, it is a difficult conversation when that doesn't, when the facility doesn't cash flow in a particular year. Um, it is difficult. So, um. Good luck to the supervisors on on your goal setting and um, those types of political endeavors um, of keeping the neighbors open. So thank you for your support. Um, financials, going back to the financials, like I say, um, it's a projection at the end of the year. 
it you know it takes until September of the following year to get the audit back. <clears throat> the audit does include things like um, um, the what we call OPEB, which is the basically the things that we would be liable for if if the whole county shut their doors, we'd be liable for people's pensions. The cost of that liability is built into the audit. So there's things that are on paper and things that are cash. Um, and as Greg said, the cash flow this year was negative, but many years it's been positive. Um, so in general, the you have some good years, you have some bad years. Um, so there's the financials, the detail for the, each facility is there. Um, agency staff. So this is the agency staff in detail. That equals the 5.3 projection. Right now we're at 3.5 million. And if we go down to the internal staffing, the direct hires is what we have at this one. And then the all staff nursing um, without the operational items in there, without the ibuprofen and those types of nursing expenses. Uh, uh, projecting at $10 million in staffing costs and the budget was 9.4. So we're not so far off. I mean, it's a million, but um, the cost of staffing has, has gone up tremendously since we put that budget together over a year ago. Any questions on the nursing costs? Jane? Uh, you just touched on it. What's the difference between NDC nursing staff financial report and all nursing staff financial report? Um, this should be titled like the direct direct staff that are hired by NDC. That is just nursing. It's not Carmen's salary. It's not facilities. It's not financial. And then the all nursing includes agency. So the other one is just together just internal and the other one is internal and agency to show the true combination of them so that takes out the difference of how we budget of just the extra and shows this is those two added together um, versus what we budgeted for nursing added together thank you yep nursing wages without the operational expenses that um, get thrown into the nursing category on the front page It so, looks like I don't see any questions. Okay. Senior Meals is doing uh, healthy and they're um, consistent. Uh, the revenues, 12,000, 15, 15, 14, 15,000. And the expenses are consistent as well. And the depreciation by... Um, by building and showing that that is posted monthly, so it is up to date. As you're going through this, Jane, yeah. and before I forget, uh, you've made some changes so you don't have to input everything every month. How is it as far as preparing the things now? Is it a little easier or? Oh, um, it? It's easier for me because Beata's doing all the download for everybody's reports. So um, it's much easier for me, although Carmen and I and Beata go through these generally once a month to make sure there's no errors, um, that everything is posted to the right account. It's a little more, um, we're looking at it differently, but it does save a little bit of time. And I'm not keying in numbers, so that will not have any errors. Okay. Um, so if we, you reduce that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. And I think audit wise, I think it's more um, reliable uh, for the county board to know that they're, all the reports are, are being seen by the CFO. And that I believe is the end of my report. Okay, then uh, we I, need... Uh, could I just say thank you, Jane, for all that you do, going through all these reports and everything every month. We really appreciate your work. Oh, oh thank, well, thank you, you. 
I appreciate people that that are interested in their reports. <laughs> A lot oh. of work. Oh. Um, so yeah, keep asking questions. That's that's wonderful. Okay, then uh, the action we need to take is to accept uh, the vouchers and financial reports. Uh, take a supervisor Witzel moves to accept the vouchers and financial reports, and I think Supervisor Breslin seconded. No other discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes unanimous, and we have accepted that. Next meeting date and time. Let's call this announcements too a little bit. Okay. Um, Carmen did a Chippewa Valley Learning and Retirement CVLR class. And that's nice PR and you get out there. How'd that go? It went really well. Um, it was actually yesterday uh, morning. Uh, so it just happened. Uh, it yeah. went really well. I would guess there is about, four, Dr. Brown was there. I would guess there's about 40-ish people there something like that. Mm. So um, a pretty good turnout. And I thought it went really well. Lots of good questions. Um, so, yeah. He put together his PowerPoint. Explained it very well. Yeah, a lot of good questions. Mm -hmm. And positive feedback, too. So I thought that was good. Okay. That, that was the next question. I yes. was wondering about the feedback. You didn't get a sense of people coming there and saying, oh, boy, the neighbors, let's Let's find out the scoop here. No, um, there is a couple of pointed questions, I think, but um, it was it was pretty good. Um, I was actually I used the same base PowerPoint that I gave to the exec committee a couple weeks ago um, and then just added more information um, about staffing and things like that. But I did use the um, the aging population topic was part of the big point of it, um, as well as. Uh, just our community and how nursing homes and long-term care is affected. Um, so yeah, it was. I thought it went really well. Okay. I did get that as a question afterwards. Someone came up to me and said, "How do I put my name on a waiting list just in case?" Um, so I think people are getting more prepared for um, the times to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, next meeting date would be Thanksgiving, I believe. Uh, October 26th. Oh, okay, October 26th. I will be gone. Okay. You will be also. That leaves you, Mr. Vice Chair, and uh, Mr. Keeter and Mr. Breslin uh, with three, which is a possibility. Mm -hmm. That's tough. We might not get a quorum. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the wishes of the committee? Maybe just to be on the safe side, move it. Can can we move it uh, a week plus or minus? How about if we combine the October and the November ones, like the beginning of November, something like that? Because November would have um, November falls on Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 That's so, good. Uh, that people that are working like Sean. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So um, you have a suggestion, uh, Carmen? I just need to check um, my leading age board meeting schedule to make sure it's because that was why we moved this from the third to the fourth um, Thursday, but probably earlier in the month would be fine. Would um, the ninth of November work? I it would for me, ninth of November. However, you won't have any uh, October data for financials because we don't close our books until after the 10th or 12th of the month. Uh, and we don't have to necessarily have it on a Thursday, do we, since we're moving? Mm -hmm. No. We could do it on the 13th or the 14th. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Check in. Yeah, the meeting would be the 15th, right? The board meeting would be 15th. Yeah, it's on a Tuesday because it'd it, be on the 14th, wouldn't it? No, it's on a Tuesday. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, let's see. Well, the 13th and 14th would both be good, wouldn't they? It can be on the same 
day as a board meeting? As long as the room's available. So, <laughs> Wednesday, is that Wednesday unavailable? On the 15th? Uh, 15th, I, I have a PRD meeting in the morning. Chris, are you able to look at the county board meeting schedule while you're on there? The first is done on Monday, no? Yep, I can't wait, no. Definitely not? Oh, okay. Well, no, I think he said he's going to look. Yeah, because he'll have he can look at what um other meetings are because any of the other committees we don't want to book the same room the same time kind of thing. So just to summarize, we're we're looking for one date that will be for October and November, mm -hmm. one meeting. Okay, November, and we want to do it after the after the tenth, correct? We want to, yeah, we want to do it after the 10th so that we can get the financials and stuff. Okay, so the 14th, which is a Tuesday, county board meets at 7. CR and D or resources and tourism meets at 4.30. There's nothing in the morning. Uh, the 15th, uh, there's a planning resource and development at 8.30. 16th, there is health and human services at 6.00. So and the, the morning of the 16th should be open, and the morning of the 14th looks like it would be open. So did you said 13th or 14th? Nothing, yeah. there, there's nothing on the 13th at all. Okay, and the 14th? 14th in the morning would be fine. 15th would not work. 16th oh, let's, let's, let's look at two dates. Let's look at two dates right now and eliminate them. Uh, 13th and 14th, Monday and Tuesday. Uh <laughs> Supervisor Bjor, uh Supervisor Breslin, either one of those days? Either one works for me. Okay, uh Supervisor Keeter. I'm fine. Either one. Either one? Okay, then let's uh let staff choose. So what's the most convenient for you guys, a Monday or a Tuesday? Um, probably a Tuesday. Mondays can be a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Same day as our meeting. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Nine a nine a.m. Still. Yep. On the fourteenth. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. And one meeting instead of two. We don't have to worry about Thanksgiving. Yeah. Perfect. The week after, right? Thanksgiving is twenty third. Yes. Okay. Thanksgiving yep. is the twenty third. Okay. Correct. I didn't know you're in the military. In the Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why? Can't send a link to uh, Watertown, South Dakota, at, an, at the wrong time, and you really can't send a link to Watertown, South Dakota, and end up in Wisconsin, Watertown. Is, is this for personal? Uh, we'll save that question. I won't. I won't ask you that. Experience. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, we have the date then, Tuesday, November 14th, 9 a.m. will be our meeting for combined October, November. Any other announcements or comments? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, um, have I missed it or is the 10-year celebration coming up? It's on Sunday. Yeah. Um, good catch. I forgot about that. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how because we talk about it a lot. Yeah. Uh, so this <laughs> Sunday, uh, we will be having our 10-year celebration of the Neighbors. Everything will be outside. Um, we did confer with public health that it's still okay to have it uh, because of all of our COVID outbreak stuff. We were a little bit nervous. Uh, the only thing that would be inside is we will have signs to get to the restrooms in the central <laughs> building because um, we do not have uh, outdoor bathrooms. Uh, I know a guy that rents them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we will be having that on Sunday. Um, it's going to be really fun. We have a car show. Uh, we have a entertainment coming, uh, games, a couple of booths from other departments from the county, and then a couple of food trucks as well. Uh, we are still working out a plan to do bingo because that was something we were going to do inside. Uh, so we're working a way of moving it around so that the entertainers for half of it and then we have bingo outside for half of it as well because we did have people looking forward to bingo. So um, and a couple of different games. We're doing a cakewalk, um, a bunch of fun stuff. So time again? Uh, I'm going to look so I don't get it wrong. 
Um, I believe it was 11 to three, I think. Um, but I'm going to double check because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Because I have on my calendar the time I'm going to get there, which is earlier. Um, shoot that's uh 11 o'clock is the start time 11 to 2 mm -hmm. yep and we did send an invite to all of the county board members that were on the county board when the neighbors was originally built so there might be some familiar faces there too so that'll be fun All right, then. Anything else? Then we are adjourned. Sure.